My name is Cheryl Patton. I'm a blogger on home decorating. I have a website, CherylPatton.com. Cheryl with a C and Patton with an E-N. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this headboard, covered it with fabric, and applied upholstery tacks. All for my guest room, which I dub the Italy Room. My original headboard had inverted corners, which I did not care for. Plus, I found it too short and you could see the wood supports, which I also didn't care for. So I decided to build my own. I first have Home Depot cut 5 8 inch plywood, 64 inches by 36 inches, my desired headboard dimensions. I then picked out two 1 by 4 inch common boards, 6 feet in length. I like to line them up on the floor to find the ones with the least warping. Once we returned home, we split the two common boards in half evenly to create four boards. After clamping the boards onto the plywood, I then marked it with a pencil to get the correct length. I used wood glue to attach the common board to the plywood. I then held firmly in place with four clamps. The screws I'm using are 1 and 5 eighths inch in length. I happen to have drywall screws and so that's what I used. I have two screwdrivers, one with a drill bit that I use to drill the pilot holes, followed by the other one with a screwdriver bit which I drilled the screws into the pilot holes. Once all four boards were glued and screwed. I took a 2 by 4 and measured it approximately 60 inches in width. I evenly placed it onto the headboard one third of the way down. I attached it with shallow screws approximately 2 inches so it would hold while I flipped the board and then I could attach the longer stronger screws from the top end. And that's what will hold the French cleat which holds the headboard to the wall. To create the padding I wanted for the headboard, I chose a one and a half inch egg crate memory foam mattress topper I purchased on Amazon. It was long enough, but not quite wide enough. So what I did after I trimmed the length, I took that piece, I cut it in half, and that's what I would attach to the top. I knew I didn't need padding on the bottom but I did want it for the top. To hold the foam in place, I used an upholstery adhesive purchased at Joann's. I sprayed it onto the headboard and then pressed the foam down. The two pieces that I had cut from the ends, I also glued to the top of the headboard. Hindsight 2020, I would have cut my headboard 34 inches instead of 36 inches to avoid this step. On top of the foam, I then stapled quilt batting. I'm not sure that it really added or contributed to the headboard, so if I did it again, I would not include this step. I can now cover my headboard with my desired fabric. At first I used a manual stapler, but I found that the electric stapler worked much better. The corners can be rather tricky. What I did was I cut from each end almost to the board and then cut out a triangle coming out. Then I took the tips, cut some more fabric out as I'm trying to reduce the bulk. I keep tweaking it until I get the desired result. Then I pull and pull and staple it all in place. After turning the headboard right side up, I place sewing pins equal distance apart at one and a quarter inch. This is so I know where to hammer in the upholstery nails. The nails I'm using are matte pewter, three quarters inch by five eighths inch. I use a steel hammer because I don't worry about the top looking scuffed because it already has that look.
I place pins along each side and hammer in the nails, just as I did at the top, the same distance from the edge. For the second row, I took a piece of cardstock and measured three and a half inches, and I marked one and a quarter inch, which is the spacing I want for my nail heads. As I was pounding in the nails, I sometimes pounded crooked, and I made the, the shaft go sideways. I knew I couldn't use this nail again, but I had plenty extra. Once I had the second row in, I noticed one of the nails was crooked. So I took a nail puller that I had on hand and I gently prodded up the crooked nail. Of course, I couldn't use it again, so I replaced it with a new nail. Now that the headboard was done, it was time to hang it. I chose a 30 inch French cleat. The first part is screwed to the board that was one third down from the top of the headboard. The second part, which will be screwed to the wall, fits inside the cleat on the headboard. I placed the headboard at the height I wanted. My husband and my son held it up and drew a line on the wall. They then drew a line the distance down from where the board on the headboard was. The yellow contraptions on the wall are stud finders. Ideally, you would like your cleat to be screwed into studs. We were able to do that on two of the studs, but in the far end, we had to use a sheetrock anchor. Once the cleat was screwed to the wall, the final step was to hang the headboard and make sure that it was level. This is a photo of my previous headboard, which was smaller, and you could see the wood supports. I like my new headboard. It's larger, and it's rectangular in shape. The reason I dub this guest room as an Italy room is because of the vintage pictures I hung all from a calendar I purchased years ago. Now my guest room is complete with a new comforter, new curtains, and now a new headboard. All of the items I use to make this headboard are referenced in the description below. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Meanwhile, you can see more of my decorating ideas on my blog, www.cherylpatton.com. Cheryl with a C and Patton with an E-N.